Rome is one of the most impressive cities in the world. This city is steeped in history, culture, and ancient buildings, whose rich heritage dates back almost 3,000 years. Rome gives you the feeling that you are wandering through a vast open-air museum. Welcome to the capital of Italy. I visited this city in January, the tourism during this period is generally much less crowded than in the peak season. Also the weather is much milder, allowing you to walk long distances through the city without it getting too hot. But don't forget to book attractions in advance, that's still necessary during this period. The Roman Empire is one of the most influential and enduring empires in history, having its origins in Rome. The influences of this empire are still visible in the city, not only in the ancient buildings that are still standing, but also in the street pattern of straight wide roads that lead to squares and intersections. The Monument of Victor Emmanuel II is an impressive structure also known as the Altar of the Fatherland. It is named after the first king of Italy and was built between 1885 and 1925. The design, featuring marble columns, statues, and sculptures, is highly impressive. Inside the monument, there is a museum dedicated to the Italian unification. The monument is open to the public free of charge, but there is an admission fee for the museum. Not only during the day is this place very remarkable. In the evening, when it gets dark and the monument's lighting turns on, the structure takes on a completely different appearance. From the higher elevated parts, this place offers a beautiful panoramic view over the city. It is highly recommended to visit this place, as well as other places in Rome, at night. In the darkness, the beautiful architectural details such as columns, arches, and statues stand out much better thanks to the lighting. The illumination creates a special ambience and atmosphere, giving rise to an enchanting setting, and enhances the historical value of the city. The Colosseum is not only one of the most iconic symbols of Rome but also one of the most impressive architectural achievements of antiquity. This amphitheater is located in the heart of Rome and was built in the 1st century AD as a gift to the Roman people. It was primarily used for gladiatorial combat, animal fights, and hunting shows. The oval structure was approximately 189 by 156 meters in size and had four floors with 80 entrances, which were necessary because the theater could accommodate 50,000 spectators. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the Colosseum fell into decay, a subsequent series of earthquakes in the 5th century, looting, and neglect severely damaged the theater. Restoration work began in the 1990s, but almost two-thirds of the original building had already been destroyed. The theater attracts millions of visitors annually, with various guided tours available. The ticket for the Colosseum also grants access to the Roman Forum and the Palatine Hill, located next to the amphitheater. The Roman Forum served as the political, religious, and commercial center of ancient Rome. The area developed from the 7th century BC, with the Temple of Saturn being built centuries later, making it one of the oldest temples on the Forum. Besides this temple, the site also houses the Arch of Septimius Severus and the tombs of some important Roman figures, including Julius Caesar. Rome was built on seven hills, with the Palatine Hill being the most central and considered the spot where Rome was founded. Due to its central location in ancient Rome, several palaces were built here during the imperial period. 
In addition to being an important archaeological site and providing insight into the daily life of ancient Romans, this hill also offers a magnificent view of the Roman Forum and the Colosseum. Rome boasts over 900 churches, making it the city with the most churches in the world. Many churches are lavishly decorated both on the exterior and interior. Due to the architectural splendor and numerous artworks to behold, it is recommended to step inside one of these many buildings. The largest church in the world is located in the smallest independent country in the world, surrounded by the city of Rome, Vatican City. This fortress within the city of Rome is the administrative center and the home of the head of the Roman Catholic Church. The borders of the Vatican are partially accentuated by high walls that served as defense against possible attacks, some of which were demolished in the 19th century. When visiting this special piece of land, you first arrive at St. Peter's Square. This enormous square, measuring approximately 340 by 240 meters, accommodates tens of thousands of people during religious ceremonies and events. Surrounding the square are two semicircular colonnades, each with 284 columns, symbolizing the arms of the Catholic Church open to welcome believers. In the center stands the immense St. Peter's Basilica, which is freely accessible to everyone. Various architects, including Michelangelo, contributed to its construction, which began in 1506 and lasted for more than 100 years. Once inside, the vast size and rich decoration of this building provide a breathtaking experience. Throughout the day, various services are held that you can attend. The architecture of this church is a masterpiece of the Renaissance and Baroque styles. It is also possible, for a fee, to climb the dome of the basilica, the over 300 steps offer a panoramic view of the entire city. Next to the extraordinary basilica, a visit to the Vatican museums is also highly recommended. This museum provides insight into the Vatican with its various rooms that form true works of art. Here you can find the map gallery, a long corridor with detailed painted maps of Italy that offer a glimpse into the geographical knowledge of the 16th century. The main attraction of the Vatican is the Sistine Chapel. This large chapel is almost entirely painted and contains, among other works, the masterpiece by Michelangelo. In this space, the cardinals gather when a new pope needs to be elected. Unfortunately, filming is not allowed here, so you will have to go to this impressive place yourself to experience it. As you can already see, the spaces outside the Sistine Chapel are also a true experience. You walk through various richly decorated chapels, galleries with many sculptures, and courtyards. Here you will find not only Roman art but also art objects from around the world that the different popes have collected over time. Due to the size of the museum and the many objects, you can entertain yourself here for hours. Make sure to arrive early at the museum to avoid the extreme crowds. 
A tip is to visit the upper floors with the different chapels and galleries first after opening. This way, you skip the initial section that you will visit later but it gives you the opportunity to explore the most beautiful parts in peace. St. Peter's Square is beautifully illuminated in the evening, giving it a completely different atmosphere. The square is often less crowded than during the day and thus offers a quieter and more relaxed experience. However, both the Basilica and the Museum are closed in the evening. As I said, Rome is a vast open-air museum. In many places, you can find remains of the Roman Empire that are freely accessible from the streets. Not far from the Roman Forum, you'll find the Portico di Ottavia, a footpath that connected two temples, and the adjacent Teatro di Marcello. This theater was commissioned by Julius Caesar and was one of the largest theaters in Rome. The structure of the ancient theater is now only partially visible, over the years, large parts have been destroyed, and remnants have been incorporated into new buildings. The Sacra del Largo Argentina is a site where four Roman temples were discovered, along with the remains of the first permanent stone theater built in Rome. Walking through the narrow streets of Rome, you come across a very special and large building, the Pantheon. The original structure, dating back to 27 BC, was a temple dedicated to all the gods of the Roman Empire. The current building was constructed around 120 AD by Emperor Hadrian, after it was destroyed by a fire. The Pantheon is renowned for its impressive dome, boasting a diameter of over 43 meters, with a circular opening in the center allowing daylight to filter through. In the 7th century, the temple was converted into a Catholic church dedicated to Saint Mary and the Martyrs. Even today, it continues to serve as a church, hosting ceremonies. Perhaps you'll be lucky enough to witness one during your visit to Rome. With its architecture, antiquity, and interior, this ancient building stands as one of the most remarkable structures from antiquity, having remained virtually intact over time. This makes it a truly special place and one of the most popular attractions for tourists. In addition to all the beauty we have already visited, there are many more remarkable locations to visit, such as the world-famous Trevi Fountain from 1762. But also Piazza Navona cannot be missed, this large square was originally an athletic stadium built in the 1st century AD. The shape of the square still resembles the old field, and the stands have been replaced by the current surrounding buildings. When you want to escape the rush of the city center, you'll find Villa Borghese Park located on the north side. If you head here, there's a good chance you'll pass by the ancient city walls of Rome. The entire wall was completed in the year 280, with an estimated 10% consisting of older structures including the Pyramid of Cestius and an aqueduct. Upon arrival in the park, you'll immediately notice the tranquility. Within the park, 
you'll find various museums, villas, pavilions, and sculptures. The large pond with the Temple of Asclepius catches the eye in this beautiful park. The park is situated relatively high, allowing for a splendid view over the city and the adjacent Piazza del Popolo from the Terraza del Pincio. During this four-day weekend trip, the city has pleasantly surprised me. There is so much to see and visit that you won't have a dull moment. If you've never been to Rome before, hopefully, this video will inspire you to visit this beautiful city sometime. I hope you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss my next trip either. Thanks for watching and see you soon.